Good morning on a blustery winter morning where we're all watching this from home today because church has been canceled and I hope you're staying inside and staying safe and warm. Ironically, the gospel lesson assigned for today takes place on a warm, sunny day. Jesus is out walking and he's in the process of calling his first disciples. And he encounters Philip. And Philip, in the encounter with Jesus, realizes that Jesus is the Messiah. And he gets excited. And not only because the Messiah has now asked him to be one of his disciples, but because he has had this moment in time that is literally life-changing, uh, an experience, an interaction with Christ, with the Christ, the Messiah. And he gets so excited, and he runs, and he finds his brother, Nathaniel. And, and he's excitedly telling Nathaniel all about Jesus. And I found the Messiah, you, you know, you, you've got to come, you've got to be part of this. And, and in the process, he tells Nathaniel that Jesus is from Nazareth and Nathaniel's pretty cynical and he has his doubts and he said, can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip says these words that are incredible. He said, come and see. It's a simple invitation, come and see. So Nathaniel goes and he encounters the Christ. And they become part of Jesus's original 12 disciples. 2000 years later, you and I are called to be disciples of Christ. And we are called to do exactly what the original disciples and apostles did. And that is to tell people about Jesus Christ, to bring people to Jesus Christ. But in the 21st century, we struggle with that. For, for valid reason. There are a lot of denominations out there. There are a lot of churches. There are a lot of Christians who shove their religion and their faith down people's throat. They are obnoxious. And I'm, I'm just going to say it like it is. They're obnoxious. And we don't want to be around them. They're judgmental and a lot of times hateful and they just give people the willies and people don't want to have anything to do with them and you and i who are not like that want to make sure that people know we're not like that and so in this attempt subconsciously to not be like that we end up going too far overboard the other way and we ended up we end up not sharing our faith with Christ, with people. We end up not evangelizing for Jesus. So how do we how do we find that way to do and be what we're called to do and be without being what we don't want to be and what in 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 fact he doesn't want us to be like that either. He doesn't want us to shove him down on other people's throats. He doesn't want us to turn other people off. He wants us to be like Philip, to be excited about our life with him, to, to be excited about the moments that he touches us and wanting to share those with people we know and love because we want them to have and to experience what we have and what we have experienced. Well, you know, we do this all the time. We just don't realize we're doing it. It actually comes natural for us. Think about the last time you went to a place that was the first time there and it was fabulous. Maybe in the new brewery in town, the new donut shop, a restaurant that you hadn't tried before. Or maybe it was a restaurant that you have tried and loved and, and know, but it was a new new dish that you had never tried, but something you had never tried before and you loved it. 
What did you do? You told people about it. You did. I'm pretty sure you did because it's natural. When I was in seminary, my husband worked two jobs to help put me through seminary. And one of those jobs was at Radio Shack. And one weekend I was home from seminary and I was doing his laundry and his uniforms for Radio Shack were pale khaki pants and pale blue dress shirts. And I did a load of his dress clothes for Radio Shack and there was a pen in his pocket that I didn't realize. And when I got the clothes out of the dryer, every item of clothing in that dryer looked like a two-year-old had taken a pen and drawn all over them. And I was devastated. We did not have the money to go buy him a whole new wardrobe. And so I ran to the store and I'm in the laundry aisle looking at stain cleaners um, and, and thinking, you know, trying to find something that says new or improved or miracle, something that I thought might take this ink out. And I found something and I took it home, sprayed everything down, let it set, rewashed it. And this time they came out of the dryer and every single ink stain was gone. I ran to the phone and I called my best friend immediately. I didn't even fold up the clothes. I was on the phone with my best friend. I'm like, Alicia, you've got to try this. We, we each need a case of this. With our kids, with our boys, we need this. You need, you got to go get this. This is, all, this is awesome. And then I called my grandma because my grandfather's work clothes were a horrendous mess for her to clean. And I'm calling grandma saying, you, you got to, you need this. In fact, I'll bring you this bottle and you can try it. I was on my fourth phone call fourth phone call telling people you've got to go buy this stuff when it suddenly dawned on me that I was evangelizing for Clorox that's what I was doing I was evangelizing for Clorox and it was it was so simple and then I wondered have I ever told anybody what Jesus has done for me as excitedly as I'm telling them what Clorox has done for me? And the answer was probably not. So how do we do that? How do we find that happy medium, that place where we can share our faith in Jesus Christ? where we can let people that we love, people that we know, that Jesus Christ can make a difference in their life without being one of those obnoxious Christians that nobody wants to be around. We just tell them our story. It really is that easy. And there are openings and conversations all the time. Losing my husband when he was 48 was one of the worst days of my life. But as I've sat with people who are losing loved ones, who have just lost a loved one, that experience with losing Dale allows me to share with them what a difference God made for myself and my children during the, that darkest part of our lives. Tell them the stories of the times that we saw Jesus at work in our lives, that we know he was there. And it's just a simple matter of telling our stories. And there's another way. If you find something on the internet that touches you, I mean, we're in the 21st century, folks. We share everything on, online. So if you find something that touches you, that makes a difference, just share it. Just sharing it. You don't have to say, hey, everybody, listen to this, or hey, everybody, watch this. Just share it. Jesus will pull the people that need to see it to it, 
and nudge them to watch it or to listen to it. If it's a, if it's a podcast, to listen to it. If it's a video, to watch it. And there's another way. There's a dear saint in our church who read a book. In fact, she read this book. It's called Holy Moments. And this book impacted her greatly. This book is about finding meaning and purpose in our lives in the moments that matter. Those holy moments where we see and experience Jesus Christ. And this book impacted her greatly. She had these, uh, probably even a bigger reaction to holy moments than I had to Clorox. And she, she went and bought this book and has been passing it out to everybody. And I mean everybody. I know of over a hundred books that she's bought. And I honestly don't know the latest total. But she, she's handing them out. And she handed them out to every woman, woman in our church. And, and last Thursday, we gathered as our women's group to have a conversation about it and realized this book is impacting everybody that I know who's reading it. You see, it's easy for us to see Jesus in the big moments. It's easy for us to see God in the big things but we miss him in the little things a lot. Jesus is around us and working in and for and through the things around us so much more than we realize. And it's because we're not, we're not looking for him. We're not expecting to see him and we miss him in the little things. And sometimes it's not the big things that make the impact in our life. Now, obviously big things make an impact, but even more impactful in our day-to-day -day life are the little moments, the daily moments. And this book will help those who read it see those moments in the way they really are, the, the fact that they are holy moments. So I'm going to do what our friend at church has done. If you want to experience this, do one of two things. Either get a hold of me and let me know. And you can do that by leaving me a message on Facebook. You can um, go to Karen Torres at hotmail.com and send me an email. Message our church. Get a message to me. I'll make sure you get this book. Also, there is a website. And if you go to the website, they will send you six free copies so that you can keep one for yourself and give five away to other people. And after I post this um, video on Facebook, down in the comments section, I will put the address where you can go and get your six free copies. And I'm hoping you read this because by her handing me, and she did, I'm her pastor, and she handed me this book and said, you have to read this. What she was doing when she handed me this book and said, you have to read this, is the exact same thing that Philip did when he went to his brother and said, I just saw Jesus come and see and so that's what I'm doing for you. I just saw Jesus. Come and see. Amen.